sing it solemnly and begin to see chains of problem falling. I see, I hear the chains falling. Chain of luck. I see the chains falling. I see the chains falling. Chain of barrenness. I see the chains. I see the chains falling. Chain of the motion. I see the chains falling. I see the chains. I see the chains falling. If you know chains are falling, just lift up your hands and bless the name of the Lord. Somebody wave your hands unto the one who is, unto the one who was, unto the one who is to come. Somebody lift up your hand, lift up your hand, lift up your hand. Somebody lift up your hands. Hallelujah. 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 Let me see you clap your hands. Everybody, let's clap. 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 The Bible says in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. If you know the, the, the presence of the Lord, as feel your heart. Let me see you clap your hands. God, you are higher than any other. Awesome in power. Our God, our God is greater. Greater. Oh, oh, oh. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. He says, I am. Ayo, 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 awasi mumpa mpara. Ayo, 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 awasi mumpa mpara. Ayo, ayo, awasi mumpa mpara. Ayo. 
ayo, 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 abasi mo papa, ayo, ayo, ayo. What shall we do today? You say today. Oh, I will lift up my voice. What shall we do today? Everybody today. Oh, I will lift up my voice. So for I know, for I know, for I know, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God, oh my God. Almighty God, you are my holy now. No matter what we face, no matter what we face, what's up is come our way, I will pray. So you are Lord, that's what the Lord, you are Lord, that's what the Lord. That's what the Lord, you be praised. You are Lord, that's what the Lord, yeah, yeah. Somebody pray. Somebody worship. Somebody worship. Somebody pray. 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 Somebody worship. Somebody pray.
apologetically in love with you. To bow at your feet is my highest calling. Thank you, Jesus. I'm in love with your love. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our Lord and our precious Father, we are here before you. And it is time for us to hear from you. I pray, God, that you will speak to your people. Amen. That you will anoint my lips this morning to speak of your words alone are not of mine. Amen. Anoint my lips. Speak through my vocal cord that I may deliver your word with precision, with accuracy, and with power. Amen. The Bible says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. And that the eyes of our understanding being enlightened that we may know the hope of his calling what are the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints? Father, I pray that the eyes of our understanding be opened, be enlightened in the name of Jesus. Lord, at the hearing of your word, that your people be blessed and all glory be returned to you. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. If you are glad to be in church this morning, put your hands together for Jesus. Today is the last Sunday in the month of October. You can do better. Jam your hands together for Jesus. Amen. It's such a joy to have you worship together with us this morning. You may be seated. You may be seated. I want you to welcome somebody quickly to your left, to your right. Welcome that person. The last time you saw that person was last week Sunday. Tell that man how handsome he looks. Tell that woman how beautiful she looks. And be honest about it. Huh? Amen. Praise the Lord. So today we continue on our message series. Today is the week three of our message series on Victorious Church. Victorious Church. And we have been looking at how the church, which is the body of Christ, can be victorious over the devil and his demon. So today, the message title is more of a question. It's more of a question. So I titled my message this morning, Can a Christian have demons? Can a Christian have demons? I can see some people laughing. How can it be? So we'll be reading from the book of John. John chapter 8, verse 33 and 36. John 8, verse 33 and 36. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, unless I say otherwise. So it's the time of that, of the hour where we read together. So if you still have your Bible and they are still in your bags, it's time for you to bring them out so that we can read together. And if you don't have them here, just look to the screen. Amen. Amen. All right. Jesus is the head of the church, and we are the body of Christ. So in the last message, we established that it's a fact that the devil and his demons they are the greatest enemy of the church. The devil and his demon, they are the greatest enemy of the saints. And God wants you and I to be mindful. He wants you and I to be mindful of their methods, to be mindful of their tactics, to be mindful of their schemes. God wants you and I to be mindful of the devices of the devil. God wants you and I to be mindful of the devices of the devil. 
about his plan to bring division to the church, to bring distraction to the church, to bring this association to the church. The devil wants to destroy the church. He's always seeking to want to bring the church under. That is the plan of the devil. He's always seeking to subdue the church. He's always seeking to destroy the church. And God wants us to be mindful. He wants us to be mindful against all his plan. He wants us to be mindful against all his tactics and to be mindful about sin, about sin. That is why God wants you and I to take control of our body. God wants us to take control of our flesh. You see, the flesh have its own appetite. The flesh have its own cravings. It has its own craving. Don't give up to the flesh. Don't give up to the appetite of your body. When you allow your body to determine what you do, when you allow your body to determine in your decision, it will lead you to sin. Your body will lead you to sin. Let me say this, and I've always been saying this. You see, the body in its own redeemed state, we always gravitate towards sin. The body has a proclivity towards sin. It has a natural propensity to commit sin. You see, the body in its origin state wants to do sin. That is why it is easy for any man to easily commit sin. But to do that which is right is always difficult. So God is saying to us, take control of your body. Bring it under subjection of the spirit. Don't let your body determine how you live your life. You see, when you allow your body, your flesh to determine how you live your life, when it leads you to sin. And when sin is full grown, it leads to death. It leads to death. And some other times, when sin is full grown, it allows, give room for the devil to come into the life of a believer. When sin, if you allow sin to come into your life, when you continue in a perpetual state of sin, you open the door for the devil to come into your life. Praise the Lord. You see, the devil and his demon, they are spirits. They are not physical beings. They are spirits. And the Bible, last week we said, this spirit, they live in heavenly places. They live in the spiritual realm. You see, because they don't have body, and at the same time, they are always seeking for a body through which they can manifest. They want to manifest. They want to find expression. So they are always looking for a body that they can go into, that they can possess. So the question this morning before us is, can a believer have demon in his body? Can a Christian be influenced by the devil, by demons? Let me say this. When you read through the whole Bible, you cannot find any verse that says expressly that a believer or a Christian can be possessed by demon. At the same time, when you study the Bible, you can't find any verse that says a believer cannot be possessed by demons. So this morning, I will share two stories from the New Testament of how two different individuals are influenced by demons. So turn with me this morning to the book of Luke. So the first story is in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. We are reading from verse 10. To 13. Luke chapter 13, verse 10 to 13. Now, he was teaching in one of the synagogue on the Sabbath. So Jesus was, was teaching in one of the synagogue on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could no way rise by herself. But when Jesus saw her, Jesus called her. To himself and said, Woman, thou art loose from your infirmity. And he laid his hand on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. 
she was made straight and glorified God. You see, when Jesus performed this miracle, the leaders of the synagogue saw Jesus and they were full of indignation. They were infuriated because of what Jesus has done. Listen to what Jesus said to them in verse 33, verse 16. Flip down to verse 16 of Luke chapter 13. Verse 16 of Luke 13. He says, Jesus spoke to them and said, So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, who Satan has bowed, think of it, for 18 years, be loose from the bond on the Sabbath, Jesus was asking them, this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, who Satan have bound, think of it. Jesus said, reason with me, think of it. For 18 years, is it not proper for this woman to be loosed? You see, the point in this story, there are two points in this story. The first point is that Jesus himself said, this woman was a seed of Abraham. He has, she has an Abrahamic origin. It means that if you will look at it based on the New Testament terms of the daughter of Abraham, it means a believer by faith. It means this woman is a believer by faith. The second point here is that the Bible says the woman was in the synagogue listening to Jesus. So what that simply means, the, the woman was in the midst of the saints, let me put it, the midst of the same. Listening to Jesus means the woman was a believer of Jesus. So the woman has an Abrahamic origin and is a believer of Jesus. But the Bible says this woman was being inflicted by the demons for 18 years, was obsessed, was possessed by the demons for 18 years. Let's look at the second story. The second story, turn with me to the book of Mark. Mark chapter 7, verse 25 to 29. Mark 7, verse 25 to 29. Another story. For a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, heard about him, he heard about Jesus, and she came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophysician by birth. And she kept asking him, to cast the demon out of her daughter. But Jesus said to her, Let the children be filled first, for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she answered and said to Jesus, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs under the table eat from the children's crumbs. Then Jesus said to her, For this saying, go your way. The demon has gone out of your daughter. Go your way. The demon has gone out of your daughter. You see, the first story, the woman there was someone with an Abrahamic origin. The second woman, the Bible says, was a Greek, meaning that the woman was a Gentile, was not a Jew. He was a Gentile. But the woman, the second woman, believed in Jesus and she, her daughter was healed. It then means that demons... They are not a respecter of anybody. Either you are a believer or not. Either you are a Christian or not. Either you are a child or an adult, a male or a female. You see, these demons, they don't respect anybody. It doesn't matter who you are. They attack young and old. They attack anybody. So the question again is, can a Christian have demon? The answer is yes. A Christian can have demons. As a young minister many years ago, I have seen and an experience Christian being influenced, being possessed by demons. There was one case where I was in a church program and the prayer was going on. The prayer was so intense. The presence of God was heavy in that service. And suddenly two ladies 
fell down under the presence of God. They fell down and began to scream. They began to scream. We started praying for these women. We started praying. The demon were holding strong. They were holding strong. They didn't want to go. They were screaming through those people. If you see them, they cross their legs. Those ladies, they cross their legs, not wanting to let go. You see, the demons, once they have possessed human, they don't want to let go. The demons were struggling. The ladies were conversing, saying, no, no. As the prayer was going on, they don't want to go. But eventually, we give thanks to God. Those ladies were delivered. They were delivered from those demons. You see, the demons are always seeking. They are always on the lookout of people who they can inhabit. They are looking for free house they, that they can enter to enslave you. You see, the devil wants to enslave us. They want to subjugate us. They want to take control of their host. That is what they want to do. They want to take control. When a person is possessed by a demon, they take over the life of the person. The person is no longer acting the way they should act. It is the demon in them that begins to act. But when you come to Christ as a believer, you see, the spirit of God that is on the inside you will always prevent you from having demons. When you, as a child of God, you are before God and you know that the Holy Spirit of God is on the inside of you. You cannot have demons as long as you have the spirit of God walking on the inside of you. However, however, you see, when you as a Christian, when you live your life in a way that they shouldn't, you will open the door for demons to come in. You will open the door for devil to come in. Don't live a careless lifestyle. As a believer, you have given your life to Jesus. Don't live a carefree, a careless lifestyle. Don't indulge in sins. Don't open the door for the devil, for the demons to possess you. Don't allow them to come to attack your life. Don't give them room. Don't give them room. Let sin be far from you. Let sin be far from you. You, are already, you already know the truth. And the truth has already set you free. You know the truth. F stay away from sin. Jesus on one occasion was talking to the Pharisees. And he said to them, And you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. He says, And you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. But the Pharisee, having heard this, the word, that phrase, did not land, them, land with them properly. It didn't go down with them. And they were full with so much rage in their heart. And see how Jesus responded to them. Turn with me to our text, John 8, verse 33. John 8, verse 33. John 8, verse 33. Jesus said to them, he says, when they heard this, they told Jesus, he said, we are Abraham's descendants, and we have never been bound, be under bondage of anyone. How can you say you will be made, we will be made free? Ah, Jesus says, you have known the truth, and the truth will make you free. The Pharisee says, we are descendants of Abraham. How can you say that you will make us free? How can you say you will make us free? See, flip down to verse 36 and see how Jesus responded to them. Jesus says, Therefore, if the sons make you free, you shall be free indeed. Therefore, if the son will make you free, and you shall be free indeed. Let me say this to you. It is the will of God that every believer be free. It is the will of God that we are free. We are free from the bondage and the slavery of sin. It is the will of God that we are free from every devilish and demonic attack. That is the will of God. God wants us to be free. But you, you your choice. You can open your way. Your actions can open the way for the devil to come in. Praise the Lord. 
while preparing this message, I put down nine possible manifestation of demonic activities. Number one, if at any time you feel this urge to commit suicide, you just feel like committing suicide. You just feel like killing someone. Or you just want to kill something. It could be a demonic attack. If you are that person under my voice, you just love to see pornography or you like to read about pornography. You like to smoke. You just have this urge. You have to smoke. If you have not smoked, eh, you are not at ease. Or you are always after hard drugs. Eh, you just feel like doing anything that is violent in nature. It could be the presence of the demon. If you have an unreasonable rebellion against the authority, it could be a manifestation of, a, of demons. You are always going into prison, coming in and out of prison. It could be the presence of demons. If you have this urge, this uncontrolled sexual urge, perversion towards sex, eh, there is this urge. You cannot be yourself. You cannot be. It could be a presence of the demon. And if you are a married man or a married woman, you just have this sexual perversion towards another. It could be the manifestation of the demon. If you cannot forgive, you are always full of unforgiveness. There is always a rage in your heart. Anger, temper tantrum is always in you. Check it out. It could be the presence of the demon. If you cannot stop lying, you see, there are some people can lie. You can lie. Day night like this, you can lie. You can, when, they even, when they have seen you, you can keep lying. Sometimes ago, I was at a farm. And on that farm, there were cameras everywhere. See, unknown to the guard, he has been stealing some eggs. You know, he has been stealing eggs. Suddenly, we felt that some eggs have been missing. So we looked at the camera and we saw this man stealing eggs. Daylight, daylight. We said, but you said, we asked everybody, you said you didn't steal. He said, I didn't steal any egg. Okay, we played the video. Okay, look at it. He said, ah, <laughs> I didn't know you saw me, <laughs> but I didn't see, I didn't steal the egg. You see, we, we were telling him, see you, stealing egg. He said, ah, I didn't know that you saw me, but I didn't steal it. You see, that is a demonic attack. A demonic pre presence. Lying. If you have this physical problem of cancer, eh? cancer, diabetics, tumor, tumor, high blood pressure, and you can trace it to your ancestor, your maybe your father's father, your father's father's father has it. It could be in the presence of demons in them. If you have always have a marital problem, you look at all your siblings, your sister, none of them are legally married. Those who are married have been chased out by one reason or the other. None of them are in their husband's house. Or you are a man. No woman can stay with you. You see, check it out. It could be a presence of demons. It could be a presence of... See, you check your lineage. You check your line. You cannot find somebody that you can say, this is a rich man. Or oh, this is a rich woman. You see, it, there could be demonic presence behind it. You can see poverty. Poverty. None. For the past 50 years, there is no one rich man in your, in your family. It could be the presence of demon. Or there's a recurring death. Sometimes ago, a young man came to me and said, Pastor, pray for me. Pray for me. I fear I'm going to die. I said, why? He says, sir, oh, everybody in my family are dead. I said, what happened? He says, from my mother, year on year, my father died first, followed by my mother. All my siblings, I'm the last one standing. I'm going to die. I said, you will not die. Because of that, the person ran, ran to Christ. You see, 
there is a demonic attack. There is a demon behind that. If you are a person, you see, you cannot explain. You, are, you just fall into depression. A depression that you cannot explain. It could be a demonic presence. You see, all this problem that I have recounted, sometimes may not be because of demonic presence. But as a believer, if you are going through any situation and you have done everything that you can to get free from that problem, if you have done everything, you have prayed so much, you have, they have prayed for you and this problem have refused to go, you need to check the origin. If you have lost somebody before, you have lost somebody and you have just lost another person. You see, don't look at it from the physical perspective. Look at it from, it from the spiritual perspective. It could be a presence of demons. Amen. God wants you and I to be on guard. You need to be on guard. You need to be on guard. You need to understand that the devil that we are fighting with, they are not man. They are spirit. They are spirit. They are spirit. And that is why you need to put on the armor of God to stand and to fight every affliction of the devil. Paul writing to Timothy in the book of 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, 1 Timothy, I mean, chapter 6 and verse 12, the A part of it. Paul said to Timothy, he said, fight a good fight of faith. Fight a good fight of faith. It means that we need to fight. You and I, we are in a war zone. We need to fight. You need to fight. We are in a war zone. Fight a good fight of faith. Fight a good fight of faith. You need to fight for your freedom. See, many of us are in slavery of sin. We are in bondage of sin. You need to fight for your freedom. You need to be free from the devil, the, the demonic presence or demonic attack. You need to fight for your freedom. Fight. Fight for your freedom. We are at war. We are at war. And when you go to war, you always put on an armor. No man goes to war without putting an armor. If you've seen any soldier, you, put them, you see them putting on a bulletproof vest. You, see, you put on an armor and you carry what? Weapons to fight a battle. If you have ever seen movies of Roman soldiers, if you have seen them, if you have watched those ancient movies, you will see the Roman soldiers, the way they dress, they dress with helmets on their head, with the breastplate, and they carry um, weapons on their hand. That is the kind of picture Paul was trying to present to us when he talks about how we are supposed to prepare for the battle. You see, this battle is not against man. The battle is against the unseen one. They are spirits. They are spirits. Paul is saying, prepare for this battle. You need to prepare for this battle. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians. Paul writing to us this morning that we need to prepare for battle. We need to prepare for battle. Ephesians chapter 6, 11 and 12. Ephesians 6, 11 and 12. The Bible says, put on the whole armor of God. You see, that word armor means a protective shield. Armor means a protective shield. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the walls of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principality, against power, against the ruler of darkness of this age, and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. In heavenly places. You see, don't be part of those Christians that will say, I'm a Christian. The demons cannot attack me. You see, I'm, I'm a born-again Christian. So demons cannot attack me. See, don't live in delusion. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Remember, the, the book of Ephesians 6, this verse that we just read, was written to the church in Ephesus. They are Christian. Paul did not write to unbelievers. He wrote to believers, the church in Ephesus, telling them that they need to prepare for war. If there is no demonic attack in the church, then these verses of scripture will not be necessary in the Bible. It won't be necessary. Paul writing to the church in Ephesus, just as he's writing to us this morning, he said we need to be prepared for a battle. 
We need to be prepared. You need to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. But there's one other thing Paul tells us here. Paul tells us who this enemy is. Who is this enemy? Paul says in verse 12, he says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Flesh and blood means human. It means human. Paul is saying that the enemies we wrestle against, they are not human. They are normal. They are spirits. They are spirit beings. I want you to remember this morning that Christ over 2,000 years ago on Calvary's cross has fought the battle and he has won us that victory. Devil has been defeated when he said it was finished. It is finished. The devil has been defeated. But let me say this to you. That devil is still on the loose. He's not, he's not in chain right now. He's still on the loose. He's still on the loose. That is why the Bible in the book of Revelation says that at the end of age, the devil shall be bound in chain and be thrown into the bottomless pit. Right now, the devil is on the loose. He's walking around like a roaring lion looking for whom he may devour. Stand, prepare, 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 prepare. You see that what is going on? There is a battle going on in the realm of the spirit. You need to prepare for this battle. As a child of God, don't just sit by and say nothing can happen to you. Look at your life. See where you are right now. Can you trace anything that has been happening in your life? And those things have been repeating over the years. Someone gave a testimony, said, I, I, I normally get sick every year. You see, it is not ordinary. When something is always repetitive, it's not ordinary. Always prepare for a battle. Prepare for a battle. Your devil, the adversary, is walking around looking for who he may devour. Turn with me to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. 1 Peter 5, 8. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking for who he may devour. He's seeking for who he may devour. It's a strong warning. It's a strong warning to us all. That the devil is on the loose. The demons are on the loose. He said, take heed. You see, he's a powerful spirit. The devil is a powerful spirit against whoever doesn't have Christ in their lives. If you don't have Christ in your life, the devil, you can't stand a chance against the devil. If you all don't have Jesus as a man, you don't stand a chance against the devil. That is why you need him. You need Jesus to overcome. You need him to overcome. So the question you're asking this morning is, so how do I overcome this devil? How do I overcome? How can I defeat the devil? Turn with me to the book of James. James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. James 4, 7 and 8. The Bible says, Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. He says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hand, you sinners. Purify your heart, you double-minded. If you see many Christian, when they want to quote these Bibles or scripture, they will say, resist the devil and he will flee. That is not all what the Bible says. Resist the devil. How do you resist the devil? How do you resist the devil? You don't just resist the Bible just by saying, devil go and devil goes. That is not how to resist the devil. That scripture tells us how you can resist the devil. Three steps you must take to resist the devil. First, the Bible says, submit to God. You need to submit yourself first to God. That is the first thing. We normally, we ignore that. We just say, resist the devil. The Bible says, don't just, it didn't say, resist. We say, first submit yourself. Humble yourself before the Lord. Humble yourself before the Lord. Then the next thing he says, he said, purify your heart. Purify. Do away with sin. Many of us, we are living in sin. If you are in sin, you cannot resist the devil. Amen? If you are in sin, you are always in and out. You cannot resist. He will only be laughing at you. Because you are 
in sin. The Bible says, this is how you must, you can resist the devil. He says, draw near to God and God will draw near to you. He said, cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your heart, you double-minded. Those are the steps. For you to resist the devil, you must stay away from sin. Do away completely with the lifestyle of sin in your life. But you see, the challenge with many believers is we are always waiting on God to resist the devil for us. We are always waiting on God, waiting on God to resist the devil. If you go back to that first, um, James 4, 7, he said, therefore, submit yourself. Resist the devil. The Bible didn't say God will resist the devil for you. God will not resist the devil for you. God is not going to resist the devil for you. You are to resist the devil. The victory has all, all already been won for you. It is you. Everything is about you. It is you that has to do away with sin. It is you that has to purify your heart. It is you that will resist the devil. God is waiting on you. Don't wait on God. Resist him. Resist him. Move closer to God so that God can move closer to you. Amen. Hear what Jesus says in the book of Mark 16, 17. Jesus speaking here. He says, and this sign shall follow them that believe. And this sign shall follow them who believes. Who believes? He said, in my name, in my name, they will cast out demons. In the name of Jesus, he said, they will cast out demons. The only way you can cast out demons in his name, in the name of Jesus, not in the name of your pastor, not in the name of any other. In the name of Jesus is the only way. Whatever it is that has been plaguing you, it is the name of Jesus. See, if you have been jumping from one problem, look at it from the spiritual standpoint. Look at that problem from the spiritual standpoint. Call on Jesus. You need to call on Jesus. The Bible says, it is the name of Jesus. Only through the name of Jesus that you can repel the devil. I will share with you quickly. Two people who repel the devil, who resist the devil through the name of Jesus. The first is Jesus' disciple. Turn with me to Luke 10, 17. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Luke 10, verse 17. The Bible says, then the seventy returned to him, returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demon are subject to us in your name. In your name. In your name. Not in my name. They are subject to him. In your name. The second person is Paul the apostle. Turn with me to the book of Acts 16. Acts 16 verse 18. Acts 16 verse 18. The Bible says, and did... And this she, did, she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. Paul commanded that demon to come out of that woman and the demon came out that very hour. That very hour. So I want you to remember this morning. Whenever the devil come nipping at you, whenever the kingdom of hell is set loose over your life, whenever your name pops up in the realm of darkness and they are running around to devour you, you have done everything and you still cannot find victory, just remember Jesus. When the enemy are against you, just remember Jesus. When they are trying to take your joy, remember Jesus. When they are trying to take your business away, remember Jesus. They are trying to take your child away from you, just remember Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. That is the authority that has been given to every believer. Hear what Jesus says in the book of Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. Jesus says, behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Jesus says, I have given you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all powers of the enemy and nothing, not few. 
He didn't say few. He didn't say some. He said nothing, nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. I say amen. amen. As I begin to close, let me close with this. Turn with me to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. 9 to 11. Philippians 2, 9 to 11. The Bible says, Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, of those on earth, and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of the Father. Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of the Father. Put the word of God on your mouth. Put it in your lips. Put it on your lips. Put the word of God on your mouth. Put it in your mouth. The word of God is the sword of the Spirit. That is the only way you can have victory. Put the word of God on your lips. And remember to call on the name of Jesus. To break every chain that is in your life. Whatever it is that you are going through, any adversity, any chain of slavery and bondage that you are currently in, call on the name of Jesus that those chains be broken. Chains of poverty, chains of stagnancy, chains of career failure, chains of addiction, chains of barrenness, chains of sicknesses and diseases. All you need to do is call on the name of Jesus and those chains will be broken. I said those chains will be broken. I said they are breaking right now. I said they are breaking right now. I want you to stand in the authority of the name of Jesus. Once you stand in the authority of the name of Jesus, victory is guaranteed for you. I said victory is guaranteed for you. I pray for you this morning as you stand in faith in the name of Jesus. And every spiritual wickedness, every demonic presence from today, they lose their grip over you. I said they lose their grip over you. I said they lose their grip over you. And you are free. I say you are free in the name of Jesus. If you know that you have been blessed by this message, let me hear you shout it loud. Amen. Amen. You may rise to your feet as we pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. 